Hello and welcome to another stream of the English Matura Express. My name is Chris and today we're going to talk about globalization. Welcome back. As I've already mentioned in the beginning, today's stream is all about globalization and international trade. Um, let's first have a look at today's overview of this stream. Um, at first, we're going to have a look at the overview of the topic globalization and international trade. Then we're going to dive into advantages and disadvantages of international trade. Then we're going to talk about the pros and cons of being an EU member. Maybe a quite interesting topic, especially uh, with the current situation uh, with Great Britain. And fair trade, and in the end, we're gonna do a demonstration exam analysis. Okay, so um, in the book Berufsreifeprüfung uh, für Englisch and so on, I think you know the book Berufsreifeprüfung für Englisch, and so I don't know, can't remember the exact. Um, but for those of you who are doing the Matura at Wifi, you know, it's the famous book um, you all have, I guess. So what you need to know in order to um, have the required knowledge for this topic is the chapter Globalization and International Trade out of the book Berufsreifeprüfung für die Englisch Matura. Um, then Berufsreifeprüfung für Englisch, but it doesn't make sense. Berufsreifeprüfung für Englisch and so on. Um, you need to know the definition of globalization and you need to know the pros and cons of globalization. Furthermore, you should elaborate on free trade, um, international organizations, international trade, um and fair trade so the fair trade foundation what impact fair trade has on us if you need additional information visit the website fairtrade.at which will help you finding out more about fair trade Yes, that's it. So, let's start with the advantages of international trade. As first, um, of course, international trade brings um, advantages, for example, cheaper products. So, it's very easily explained, of course, if there are more products on the market, Products get normally cheaper. Um, you, so the consumer is exposed to a bigger market. Therefore, you can get everything you want. Think about online shopping. There is, of course, a bigger market since it's global and not national, therefore international. Um, it is beneficial for the economic growth of a country itself. So think about a very small country that has a lot of production, maybe of a specific good or product. And only with the help of international trade and international um, trading network this country is able to maintain itself or um, finance itself so yeah it's very good actually um, international trade there's some sort of if you are a country that has or sells a specific product that is very rare so 
geographically speaking, it's just a country that has a different, uh, a certain resource, or I don't know. You can, of course, uh, hire the export rates since it's a very um, recommended good. So it's always good for, uh, also good for the economic growth. Um, on the other hand, when you think about your country, one country can produce everything. Maybe there is something, but speaking about resources, that's just not possible about because climate is different uh, in different regions. So you a country normally needs to import goods. And that is, of course, easier. That is that becomes more easier. When there is something like an international trade. So, for example, you need something that is only available in India. And you're in Austria. The network... Can you actually read it? Yeah, it's better here. The network is that big that, that, that you're able to just import it. And that's, that's it, actually. So, just order it and import it really easy nowadays and with that import export uh, of course come tree trade agreements whatever they are almost every country has some sort of trade agreements okay of course there are disadvantages and there are a lot of disadvantages, I guess. Um, first, you have high emissions, the most obvious disadvantage, for me, at least. Um, of course, if you're ordering something from India, for example, and you want to have it shipped or brought to Austria, then you, need, you either need a plane or a ship, of course, um, train, uh, train, planes and ships, they do um, create a lot of emissions. Speaking of pollution, um, air pollution, a lot of CO2, of course, uh, which is not very good for our planet, which you already know, hopefully. Um, with that also comes the disadvantage, not with the emissions, but with international trade and the growth and the, um, the variety of products of the same range also comes a danger which is concerned with intellectual, intellectual property theft. There is something you have invented. It is quite mm, not obvious, but it is quite probable. There's a high, high, high chance of it that this will be copied somehow by some guys who know that this product sells. They just copy it, copy it, and then they can resell it. And they normally do a pretty good job at it. So you can tell them apart, but you really have to look super closely. Okay. Um, cultural complications is when, for example, there is a product name that is not correct um, in terms of the culture in, I don't know, Spain, for example. Uh, I think there are um, good examples of car manuf manufacturers, for example, but also products. Um, so 
food and so on. Um, of course, the normal food that is grown that has its name that's not included in that. But new names, new products and so on. Okay. Um, another very, very, very serious uh, aspect that comes with international trade is that local businesses, uh, business and, and stores, they are threatened because they can't keep up with the prices on the international market. They have to basically sell it on a higher price than any online shop or some or similar similar um and therefore people need to kind of also think about buying locally but it's of course something that people need to readjust and of course the exhaustion of natural resources which goes hand in hand with the high emissions so if you have high emissions you need something that has to be emitted so in this case there are mostly fossil fuels um, and of course there are natural resources you should know that and of course someday there won't be any of them left okay so this one is a little bit harder i guess especially for you that are not really into politics but i think the most obvious one you can kind of sort out some of them are pros and cons, or can work as pro and cons, depending on what you're looking at and which stance you have. So, um, stance means Standpunkt. Um, so, let's go for the most obvious one. You have free trade, basically, in the EU. You have free trade, so you can import something from Germany and you don't have a um, rate on it so tax speaking of tax and so on and if I'm talking about you want to import something I'm talking Austria it's obvious I guess um, regulations there is normally everything is regulated so there are rules that need to be followed and every EU member needs to follow those rules. For example, if you have a rule on um, what else? Uh, if you a rule on paying a toll at the highway, highway toll is mouth um, there could be a rule that the EU just says okay every country needs to have a toll or yeah that it's similar but of course as you know there are no such regulations so not everything is regulated but a lot of things especially when it comes to um, food vegetables and so all the natural grown food um they are regulated and farming and all the stuff which is good but of course yeah still things happen that shouldn't be um traveling of course is more easier which comes also with a disadvantage maybe for some for me it's not a disadvantage but i've listed it which is it is easier to cross the borders so for some um some might argue yeah everyone can now come into the country but 
it's not actually a stance I'm um, in favor of, but yeah, it could be a, a con. Maybe if we speak about uh, dangerous uh, things or dangerous, I don't know. Um, it's easier to cross borders, so I'd see it as a pro for me, but I've listed it on a con, as I've already said. Um, same currency is a pro for me, I'd say, especially if you're traveling a lot, so you just have your euros and you pay with them and don't have to worry about the different money they're using yes so a con is maybe that not maybe i've written it down a uh, lot normally the larger countries still sway the politics so they have a say or more a say than the smaller ones countries must also pay to be in the eu and Easier to cross borders. Yes, I think I take that one out. I don't like that anymore. Um, of course, if you follow um, politics nowadays, um, or actually the present politics, EU politics, there is a case that is quite interesting concerning Great Britain. Um, you might consider informing yourself about that because, um, there is a high chance that you get some questions about this. So, inform yourself. Fair trade. Fair trade. So, I've written it down, not written down that much because I'm going to explain it to you more. Just like to. It's quite small, actually. So, as you might know, um, so way better. Um, fair trade is a label that appears on certain products. You might have seen it. I've already shown you. This is the label, and it's basically a non-profit organization and you can get be a member whatever yes it appears on products that's the important thing because normally you're a consumer in certain places you ever are you're a consumer especially come when it comes to groceries so as the name says fair trade is concerned with a fair trade but not only with a fair trade it is also concerned with fair rates for everyone what does that mean fair rates for everyone this means for example if you take coffee there is somebody the farmer which normally doesn't live in austria but in South America, that needs to harvest the coffee beans. And normally, there is a whole chain of people involved there. And normally, um, farmers don't get paid that much because there are that much people involved. So there is not enough money left. Because the farmers don't really make money. With fair trade, products are a bit, just a little bit more expensive, but it assures, fair trade assures you that farmers are getting paid or getting paid a fair um, split of of the product or they just get a fair wage so 
so that they can uh, also provide a living with it. Um, so that's the main thing. Um, with uh, fair trade products, for example, if you want to buy fair trade products, you can buy fair trade um, bananas, coffee, and so on, of course. But you can also buy fair trade clothing um, and other fair trade products. So it just assures, keep in mind, this label assures that the person who produced this product, this product um, gets a fair wage. That's the most important. Keep that in mind. You can buy everything, clothing and stuff from fair trade. You might consider buying fair trade. Not think about only about those 10 euros more or less. Think about the people that have to produce it and grow it and harvest it. So, yes, keep that in mind. So, um, this is a demonstration exam. Uh, which is about globalization and international trade. In this case, winners and losers. Introduction is as always. Um, task one is globalization in this case. And you have the famous three bullet points. In this case, you are an ambitious, an ambitious student of business management. Okay, in this case, in your talk, you should mention or touch upon those three bullet points. So, definition of globalization, pros and cons, and the winners of lo and losers of globalization, which is some sort of pro and cons. But if you focus it more on a group of people, you can also come up with some good points, I think. In this case, task two is free trade. So, free trade, keep in mind, free trade is a trade that doesn't have any rates. So, you don't have import rates and you don't have export rates. Um, in this case, of course, that's the dialogue now. First, we had a monologue. Now, that's the dialogue where there are, is also an article attached to Okay, um, in this case, it's about the big issue. Free trade brings wealth, but not everyone feels benefit, feels the benefit. Important for this task too is that you um, need to uh, have your own knowledge, of course, about this topic, but you also are um, asked to add your own, um, not, one, not your own, um, you're also asked to, um, okay, now I'm stuck, I'm sorry, you're also asked to, asked to use the knowledge from the article, of course, which is important. Um, and then mingle it and yeah, do your best for the exam. And I wish you a pleasant evening. See you next week and good night.